So the Lightning module and the Lightning trainer, they already come with a lot of functionality under the hood. But sometimes we want some extra functionality that is not already included. For that, we can use callbacks. And in this video, we will cover how we can add functionality using callbacks. A callback is a self-contained program or function to extend the existing functionality, and it hooks directly into our code. So what are some of the things that we can do with a callback? So for example, we can update the learning rates with callbacks, or we can visualize the gradients, for example. We can even send ourselves emails during training or when the training has finished. So basically, we are only limited by our imagination. So in essence, there are two ways we can use callbacks in Lightning. One is using the predefined callbacks that are already available. And the second way is creating our custom callbacks. So let's start with a pre-built callback based on checkpointing. So for example, we can define this model checkpointing callback here, which monitors the validation set accuracy. And then it will save the model with a maximum validation set accuracy so that we can reuse that later. For example, when we evaluate our model on the test set or apply the model to new data sets. And as you can see here at the bottom, the callbacks, they directly plug into the Lightning Trainer. So how about defining a custom callback now? So here we are defining a callback that prints the total training time. So this callback has two methods, the on-train start and the on-train end method. So the on-train start method will be executed when we call trainer.fit, and it will save the original timestamp when we start our model training. It will also print the phrase, training is starting, and for the train on end method, it will compute how much time has passed since we started the training, and then it will automatically print the training time that has passed. So all of this will be executed by the trainer once the training has completed. And yeah, just like before, we can provide this callback as an argument to the trainer class. So here's an example of how it looks like in action. So we define the callback, plug it into the trainer, and then call trainer.fit. And as we can see on the right-hand side, when the training is starting, then it will also print the phrase, training is starting. And then once the training has finished, it will print the total time that has passed since we started the training. So on the previous slides, we had a custom callback which used the train on start and the train on end methods. So these are two places where we can hook into the code. For instance, we can hook into the code before it starts training and we can hook into the code before it ends training. However, sometimes we need a bit more than just the training beginning and the training end hooks. So in fact, there are many, many more hooks available and we will provide more resources for you if you are interested in developing your own callbacks and you need some additional hooks to hook into your code. So in unit five, we covered Lightning and how it helps us to organize our code. So we talked about the Lightning Trainer and the Lightning Module, and of course, data modules. And then we saw how we can extend the functionality using custom callbacks. In the next unit, we are talking about essential deep learning tips and tricks to make our neural networks train more efficiently and better. And in fact, many of these tips and tricks are easier if we use callbacks, which we just talked about.